Hello and welcome to New Junction. So as you can see the scene is coming together nicely. It's all but dry so I'm ready to continue. In this episode I'm going to aim to try and get it as finished or as near as as any scene can ever be. As near as possible. And hopefully I'll be able to carry on going forward. So there's lots of little jobs I need to tackle with this scene. The most obvious um, is definitely going to be the finer details. I've got a lot to put into the scene. Hopefully they'll improve it ever so slightly. There's also things like the buffers need tackling. Um, they can't stay black, they're going to be sprayed up now and painted red. The pathway needs to be buried a bit more in some more ballast as it's looking a bit um, uh, elevated. Um, the sidings themselves do need some oil stains. So I've got the uh, I've dug out my bottle of Hatton's oil spill solution. I've also got um, one of their packs of track grime. So we'll see how that works. And also a uh, common point that was pointed out to me, but don't worry, I've not forgotten. My various, as you can see just there, points where the electrical wires are poorly soldered. Using a solder sucker when we did the lighting, we've taken off the big blobs of solder. But obviously there's a, a tad of wire still showing. I'm just going to go over those with some uh, rail match sleeper grime. That's also next. And then as I say, we'll add in some of the finer details. Hopefully we'll improve the scene and then uh, we can leave it at a sort of level and then we can move on to uh, the end of the layout. So I'm quite looking forward to this one. Hopefully we'll have it finished for you by the end of the video. So first things first, I'm going to take the buffers off and get them sprayed up. So here I am at my good old spray box. <laughs> the buffers are in there, got them on their side. And for an undercoat, because they're just black plastic, I'm using some Halfords white primer. Um, I can't remember how much this tub was, I'm sure it was about a tenner, maybe even 20 quid, but this is the, the large one, the 500ml one. And I go over all my uh, plastics with this. So I'm just going to shake this up and give these a coat and then I'll be painting them red. And now one of the smaller jobs for the infamous dropper wires, which I probably should have soldered to the underside of the track, but I hate doing it, so I thought I'll do it this way. And I'm just going to lightly cover over the cable, if you can see that, and then uh, paint the solder over the top. As you can see, they disappear straight away. I'm just going to do it to this orange one as well. Paint the blob of solder. You'd never know it was there. Now, whether it's just my eyesight, <laughs> which it may well be, um, and I know doing it this way isn't the best way, as a lot of you have said, but it was much easier for me to do, and uh, I don't think the job would have got done otherwise. So in this case, there's no real harm. Um, now there's a bit of paint on them, you'd never know they were there. So now it's time to uh, <laughs> hide the rest of them and then we'll get on with the next job. Now, some of you noticed my pathwork at the back here. Um, because I've placed it on ground substrate, it does look slightly raised. Now, one of the uh, plans, once it was all in and dried, was to literally spoon more ballast in around the edges so as you can see uh, at the front just to hide the gaps and then definitely at the back towards the fen fence, just a light amount. So what I'm going to do now is literally um, get a bead of glue um, because I don't want a watery mix this time because I don't want to affect the, the actual paper covering. Um, and then uh, I'll dig out some more of my uh, ballast. In this case I've used mainly Highland ballast of the, uh, the Hatton's range, it's the fine tub this one. I'll uh, just get on with that and hopefully it'll fill the gaps in and make the pavement look a bit more sunken in as it should do.
So the ballast is done, and while that's drying, I'm going to get on to painting a bit of the um, central ballast in between the rails. Um, I do this very simply by mixing water and paint, rail match paint in this instance. I use this, more of the sleeper grime um, to a very light colouring. As you can see, I've done it already to the uh, main lines. Um, this isn't perfect by any means, but it just adds that um, bit of detail to stop it being too clean. Um, and of course, being a pilot siding, oddly, normally they're, they're quite clean places, um, apart from where the engine idles. Um, so they're not um, as uh, decrepit as I once thought. So um, again, another light coat, a light wash on the ballast is necessary here. So now what I'm going to do is show you what I do, um, just to take the new sheen off the, uh, the ballast. So here we are. It's very simple. I, uh, I'm going to use a normal syringe just so I can uh, measure out roughly how much I'm adding. And I'm going to start with five mils of water. It's actually nowhere near enough. Ten mils of water. <laughs> All I've got to do is pretend I know what I'm doing. Yeah, and then with the sleeper grime. Another syringe. I'm going to draw up, that's probably about the three, four mil mark. I'm just going to add that in, see how that looks. Now there's quite a bit there, so what I'm going to do is add a tiny bit more water, I think, but I'm just going to stir that in. See how that looks. That's looking ever so slightly um, on the thick side. It's a good hot chocolate that. So before it goes anywhere near my actual layout, I'm going to grab out the test track board I made and just give it a test. Just like that, here we are. So nothing goes directly on the layout, believe it or not. And I'm going to use my uh, test board. I'm just going to dab in the brush. And all I'm doing, just using it as a, a brief test, I'm just going to brush it on the ballast. That's actually not too bad. Ever so slightly thick. It does dry uh, lighter than what we're getting now. So to be fair, that doesn't need much at all. We're gonna add in just another couple of milks. I don't want it to be too uh, thick from the start. And I am going to be adding various uh, extras to it, like the oil spill kit and the uh, track grime. So uh, I'm gonna commit and I'm gonna put it on the siding. Right, so the general uh, layer of sleeper grime paint wash is done. Um, so that'll dry nicely and just leave a light coat. What I've done with the uh, the rest of the paint tub, I've uh, added a couple of drops of the Hatton's Oil Spill Solution, um, which comes as a pack. Um, now, one thing I should say about this is it's extremely strong. Um, it's only taken a couple of drops to turn this entire pot jet black. Um, <laughs> So what I'm going to do now is very carefully, because I don't want too much, I'm just going to go over where all the uh, points are and just odd spots on the uh, track work, just where an engine might have been sat. Remember, less is more with this, because it is, um, as I say, extremely strong stuff.
there we go just added a couple of dark patches where potential engines will sit i don't want to go too nuts um, but it will dry slightly lighter but this stuff is uh, really strong so you have been warned right so the next place i'm adding the uh, black wash is going to be around the uh, points so i'm just going to dab that on simulating various grease and mechanical dirt that there is generally around point work again not going to go too nuts because uh, uh, i don't like too much i prefer the less is more approach as you can see it just adds a tiny level of detail and again the more detail you have uh, keeps the eye busy And then for, therefore distracts from all the mistakes. <laughs> but there you go. As you can see, that generally is in the right place. So I'm going to leave that there before I make a mistake and uh, get on with the next part. So if we go back to the sleepers for a second, these have now been primed in a couple of coats. Um, this is now dry. And the next task is to paint these red. Now, I don't have a spray for this, which would make this a whole lot easier. Um, but I'm actually going to use um, one of my humble pots and just brush spray this. Um, it won't be too bad because I will go over that once that's dry with a dark wash so you won't see too many brush strokes. But that's the next job. So while the buffers dry, before I add any more uh, paint to them, I'm going to go on to a bit more detail. And I've just recently got myself this scale model scenery kit. This is the large cable drum kit. Um, it's a new one from them, so uh, hopefully all being well, it'll add um, just a touch of detail yet again to the scene. I thought it would look quite good, so I'm going to assemble these now and we'll see how they look. And there we go, that's the uh, two varieties of drum that I've just made. And um, as you can see, it's quite a nice little kit. It doesn't take too long at all to make and uh, is very effective. Now, all I was going to do is quite simply have one dumped to the side. Like so, I think the big one might be too big. I'm just going to have it as a bit of abandoned scenery almost. It's just been left. It wouldn't be helpful if I showed you. And there we go. Tucked in the middle of nowhere. And just been left. So, adding to the scene yet again. So here's one of the buffers stops we sprayed earlier into the white. It's now been coated in a, a sort of glossy red. Um, this is literally because it's the colour I had. Um, as you can see, this colour it is far too clean. So what I've done is I've uh, dry brushed it with a bit of the uh, um, oil spill solution that was left over. And then that leads me to this one. Which if I can focus on it, is much better. 
Um, what I may do is paint the actual uh, buffer stops white just on the ends, but um, no, I'm really happy with that. And uh, once that's dry, we'll stick it on the layout and see how it looks. So the buffers are drying now in place, and then I think you'll agree the red really does add a bit of life to the scene. It was looking a tad desolate, being all sort of earthy tones, but no, I'm really, really pleased with this. Um, and it just brings the the scene to life a bit, especially if we uh, zoom back a tad. You can see it just adds that wanted colour uh, to the area. Right, so on to the next bit. So next on the list is what's in this envelope. Now I was actually sent this uh, at Christmas by a fellow YouTuber who will be revealed momentarily. But, uh, as like most people, I don't half get some rubbish through the post. Now, <laughs> I was surprised when I discovered this was actually rubbish through the post. Ooh, knock the camera. Now as you can see, this is street and rail litter. Um, and it's as it says, handcrafted. Now, if I bring you closer to the camera, hopefully you can see that. It's folded newspapers and Coke cans, Pepsi cans, etc., to be scattered on the layout. Now, this comes from uh, Gary at Cheeky Tech. Now, <laughs> I was really pleased to, to uh, receive one of these in the post over Christmas because uh, I think they look fantastic, very quirky. Um, now, you can actually buy these uh, from him very cheaply on his eBay store, um, a link of which will be uh, in the description below, as will uh, links for all the products I've used in uh, tonight's video. So what I'm going to do now is open these very carefully and uh, find somewhere to glue them on the layout, more than likely uh, scattered amongst the bushes etc and against the fence. But uh, thanks a lot for those Gary. They've uh, really made my day, and they're about to make my scene. Right, so with Gary's litter, it is absolutely tiny. As you can see, there's a Coke can, can in my tweezers. I'm literally just going to place that in the bushes. As the wind's caught it. Got a newspaper here, which is going to be also tucked in there. What looks like a... Pepsi can that can go down here. It's very dirty this end of the layout. And then another newspaper can be caught just in the bushes. Just be rested there. Now I may, I think I will actually, I'm going to tuck in another one further on down here. This is where all the staff have been throwing their rubbish. It really does add something to the layout. Um, although, oddly, because it's rubbish, I'm looking at it and I want to pick it up <laughs> and clear it up. But uh, no, it's very effective. So uh, once again, Gary, thank you very much. And I'll show you some uh, close-ups of that later on. Bit of a closer view for you. As you can see, the uh, litter really does add something. Um, I have no idea how he, how he does it, especially being so small and super fiddly. But uh, I'm really impressed. And last but not least, using the uh, other half stolen hairspray <laughs> that I uh, borrowed and haven't returned, I'm just going to lightly spray over the tops of the bushes um, in various places and uh, use my uh, leaf collection in a tub. I use these, or I made these when I made some uh, um, seafoam bushes in a previous video. And I'm just going to sprinkle ever so slightly a small amount on top of these bushes just to add a bit more realism and I think that'll be that.
So the hairspray is now attached with some leaves. So I'm going to let that dry overnight and then uh, bring you some close up shots. But I think for now, the scene is in my book done. Um, I will eventually add some ground signals to it. Um, however, that will come in time, especially when I get on with a bit more progress. I'd just like to thank everyone who's followed this mini series. Um, it's been extremely fun to do and uh, hopefully well received. The comments I've received have been um, generally positive. So thank you very much for everyone who took the time to comment and I suppose join me on my small journey. So uh, I'm going to leave you now with some finishing shots, which I'll take tomorrow as I'm filming now, of the completed thing. And uh, I'll show you some trains running. And um, yeah, thank you very much. So as ever, guys, take care and thank you for watching. Thank you.